The automotive world we live in is definitely a crazy one. From 15 horsepower hypercars all the way down to hot hatchbacks that could smoke sports cars from 10 years ago, it's a great time to be alive if you're a car enthusiast. But what if you're the family man that's looking to trade your minivan in for something a little bit more fun? Well, Dodge may have the answer for you. What I have next to me is the 2018 Durango SRT. And to test this vehicle, I'm out here in Mount Hood, just outside of Portland, Oregon, with the rest of the members of the Automotive Video Association for our annual best performance car and best performance SUV. But I know you guys are probably wondering, is the Durango SRT the ultimate family hauler? Well, that's what we're here to find out. If you guys are familiar with the Durango nameplate, you'll know that it has a lot of history for Dodge. It dates back all the way to 1998. And despite the fact that this car is, the name is 20 years old, it's only been through three generations. This third generation that you're looking at first came out in 2011. And it took Dodge about eight years for them to finally give us a true SRT version with nearly 500 horsepower. Now over the years, how has the Durango's design aged? Well, I'm happy to say that it still is a relatively handsome looking SUV. Definitely a much more masculine model macho look versus all the more feminine like crossovers that you find in this segment. Now, as you can see with any SRT version, it gets its own unique front fascia. From standard uh, xenon headlights, which are only xenon in the low beams, you have um, LED daytime running lights down here, an incandescent turn signal here, and then no fog lights. The front fascia of this vehicle definitely has been uh, beefed up to make it more aggressive. You have functional air intakes, a mesh pattern finish, uh, and a little bit of an intake down there, along with functional intakes for the hood here, heat extractors to allow the engine to cool off. It's a relatively handsome looking vehicle, especially in this dark uh, shade of red that my tester is painted in with the black finished wheels. Now the Durango is definitely a lot bigger than a lot of its competition. We'll talk about the size difference in just a moment, but first of all, those wheels, these are the optional 20 inch wheels, which are like a thousand dollar, I'm sorry, a $500 option. They're kind of a black finish wrapped in 295 tires all around. This one also has summer performance tires, big Brembo brakes, as you guys know, uh, to give this vehicle a little bit more stopping power. Now, in terms of the size, the Durango is huge. It actually rides on the same platform as the Jeep Grand Cherokee, which shares lineage to old Mercedes products from 10 years ago. At 119.8 inch long for the wheelbase and 201 inches long overall, this is a full probably six to 10 inches longer than a lot of its competition. It's bigger than a Chevrolet Tahoe, but it doesn't really look like like it because it's not quite as tall as that vehicle. This is, remember, still a car-based crossover. It has a fully independent suspension, so it's not a body on frame. Now you can see at the back, the design looks nice. I mean, Dodge kind of gave it a pretty extensive refresh in 2014. You have LED combination taillights here with kind of that signature Dodge look where it goes all throughout uh, the actual lift gate. And then down here, you'll distinguish the SRT model from its own unique large set dual exhaust. I'll let you guys hear that really quick. So as you guys heard, it's basically got a muscle car V8 deep tone, which sounds really good. You wouldn't expect it from a family crossover. Now, when it comes to the cargo area, a power lift gate, of course, is standard. This is the most expensive Durango you can buy. And a third row seat is also standard. It's one of the reasons why this is about um, eight, six inches longer than a Grand Cherokee. With the third row up, you get around 17.2 cubic feet of space. There is a nice little area for storage down there. Um, no spare tire, I believe, on this one. But if you want to fold down the or seats, you can see here it's a manual folding seat. Fold this down and it looks like it's around 45 cubic feet of space. If you fold down the second row as well, uh, the Durango will give you a maximum of 84 and a half cubic feet of space. So pretty good numbers, uh, not much more than what you get in something like the Pilot, um, but 
um, considering the size of the Durango, it's still a relatively practical vehicle. Moving on to the inside of the Durango SRT, let me first show you guys the key fob. This is the same old uh, corporate Dodge or Chrysler key that you've seen before. Chrysler has a new key fob design on some of the newer models. I kind of think it's time for the Durango to move on to that, but this is an old vehicle. It does come with remote start. Just double tap this button here. And the vehicle starts right up for you, has a really nice rumble, reminds you that this is the SRT model. To shut it off, just double tap the button again. You can see this is also not a red key. Remember, this is not a trackcock or Hellcat, so you don't have that nice little detail. Now to lock the door, there's a button on the handle here. Just touch the button here, it locks the doors. To unlock it, sensor on the back of the handle. Just touch it with your key with the key on you, it'll unlock the door for you. Now, my tester has like an interior package for $1,500. It gives you like the contrast stitching and the suede. It's overall a nice looking cabin at a glance. You can see there's extra stitching and leather on the dash, on the door panels. Uh, and I also like the SRT steering wheel, but it's definitely a little bit too much black for me. I kind of would prefer something with a little more color to break it up. I believe Dodge offers a red interior as well uh, for the SRT version. Now the Durango is an SUV, so it sits up nice and high. And it's really only 0.1 inches lower than the standard Durango. So it still gives you that nice high seating position when you shut the door. It also still sounds nice and solid. Remember, this is a Mercedes platform underneath, even though it's an old one. Now to start the vehicle up, like everything else, put your foot on the brake, push the red button here to fire up the engine. Now you can see the gauges do a nice sweep. There's a nice little center display there with an LCD with a tack. <laughs> that engine sounds great. I have to say, it's weird to, to hear it in a Durango. I mean, everything in here is very similar to what I've shown you guys in the latest Grand Cherokee uh, and Grand, Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. You have the 8.4 inch Uconnect uh, head unit there, which is nice. Uh, you have extra leather stitching on the dash, which is part of that interior package, which makes the interior a little bit nicer feeling along with the aluminum trim here and there in the chrome. But I definitely, are, I'm not a fan of the actual design uh, for this interior. So I do wish, I do look forward to seeing a next generation model. Now the door panels here are also soft touch right there with a nice chrome door handle. The windows are one touch express up and down for only the driver and the front passenger. Kind of wish they offered both. Um, you do have two person memory seats. The seats themselves are like 16 way adjustable. They're relatively comfortable. I do like the suede, they're heated and cooled. Uh, no fo power folding mirrors, which I kind of wish it had. Your headlight control and dimmer switch is down there. And then the steering wheel, like the steering wheel on the SRT models, it's nice and fat, uh, has nice stitching. I like the metal they put down here. And then the paddles, they feel a little bit plasticky and cheap. Um, but they are mounted to the steering wheel, uh, but they feel the steering wheel rim feels really nice in your hands. Now looking here at the center stack, if I'm going to first put it into reverse, you do get a backup camera on this car. It's a little bit coarse and grainy, but you do have trajectory. You have uh, front and rear parking sensors, which is definitely nice. Now this Uconnect head unit, you guys have seen this before. Um, it's the 8.4 inch Uconnect head unit uh, with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is definitely nice. You do have uh, interchangeable uh, vent or buttons here where you can kind of, again, like your phone, slide and move uh, buttons around uh, and move and rearrange the uh, actual icons here, kind of similar to the, what you have on your phone. Going to the nav display here, you can see it's a Garmin-based navigation. Nothing super special, but it works relatively well. I will say that I've had issues with Uconnect in some Grand Cherokee models where it would freeze up if I had my iPhone plugged into it and crash and I have to literally restart the car, so that was a little bit annoying. Down here you can see uh, buttons for your volume, for your cl um, climate control. You have knobs here for your volume and tuning, which is nice, your fan speed knob, buttons here for your dual zone climate control, and then there are buttons here for the SRT pages. You can go here, it'll bring up the SRT pages where you can pick your driving modes, you can engage the launch control in this car, which is definitely cool, uh, which turns off the stability control. No eco button here, which is what the track ha hawk had. There's two empty buttons here, as you guys can see. The buttons themselves, they feel okay, but really the interior of this vehicle is definitely getting old. Thankfully, you have nice storage right here, which is good for a phone. You have good cup holders here. You have a very traditional shifter here with a manual mode, which is nice. Um, another little storage area here with two USBs over there. This is nice and padded right here, and it does give you a good amount of storage. There's another uh, 12 volt in there, but no other USB. This is actually a two level storage area. Uh, my tester doesn't have a sunroof. I believe it's a $2,000 option if you want that, which I would highly recommend. The seats, as you can see, they hug you. Um, they are pretty comfortable. I like the suede, um, but overall this interior uh, is probably the least attractive aspect of the Grand Cher or of the, SR the Durango SRT. And I th really think that it's time for uh, Dodge to really redesign this, this vehicle and give us an all new cabin. So the Durango is a nearly 500 horsepower family car and you probably wanna know how it is in the rear seat of this vehicle. Well, 
Hopping into the second row, you can see the space is not bad. There is a relatively flat floor here, although it's not really needed because there's no actual seat here. The second row uh, gets captain's chairs, which is standard. In terms of features, you also have rear seat vents back here. You have two level heated seats, two USB ports, a 12 volt household power outlet. So it's relatively nice. Uh, in terms of legroom, I'm a little disappointed that it's not much more than this. I mean, I do have good foot space underneath here, but because the seat doesn't actually slide back, it just kind of reclines a little bit. I wish it slid back. Um, you don't actually uh, get more legroom than some of the competition. You do have rear seat or map pockets here. And then in terms of the materials, more of that leather, it's soft touch right here. So overall, the second row is not bad. Let's hop into the third row though and see how that is. So with the Durango having a third row, occasionally you may want to use it. And you're probably wondering how is the third row space compared to the com competition? Now getting back here, you can basically pull this lever here and then the seat will kind of flip its way up. And the opening is not bad. I've definitely seen a little bit larger openings with an easier mechanism to get in and out. Now you can see the third row only seats two. Um, so this vehicle is a six seater, not, not a seven seater technically. Now getting back here, I'm gonna squeeze over to this other side. Remember the Durango is a good six to 10 inches longer than a lot of the competition. So you expect this to have a little bit more space. And I have to say, it's actually not bad considering how old this vehicle is. The floor is actually nice and low because it's got an independent suspension. I have good headroom here. Remember I'm five foot seven. Um, so I actually wouldn't be too uh, annoyed sitting back here on shorter trips. Um, I'm a little surprised though, that they don't allow three people across. So the fact that it only seats six, that's a little bit of an issue for some people, I'm sure. So the best aspect of the Durango SRT obviously has to be underneath the hood. Unlike the regular Durangos, which just has a little teeny tiny 5.7, this is the big boy. It's a 6.4 liter, 392 cubic inch Hemi V8. It's a naturally aspirated engine, push rods, no direct injection, no cylinder deactivation. This is pure American muscle. Now, unfortunately it doesn't have the lovely supercharger that we love in the Hellcat or the Jeep Trackhawk, but it still makes really healthy numbers. 475 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. That's 115 more ponies than what you get in the base or the 5.7 liter V8. Now, this all goes out through uh, an eight-speed ZF torque converter automatic. It does come standard with all-wheel drive, where it kind of gives you more of a rear biased transfer to give you more of that rear drive feel. Now, the Durango is big and it's also fat. It weighs 5,500 pounds, so ouch. It will affect the performance a little bit. Thankfully, this big motor also tows the most. The Durango will max out at 8,700 pounds, so try that in your Honda Pilot. You definitely won't be able to do that. Unfortunately, it's also a thirsty SUV. This thing is rated at 13 in the city, 19 on the highway. Recommended to use premium. Let's get it out on the road and see how it all performs. So believe it or not, I actually haven't had a chance to drive this generation Durango. Now, first getting behind the wheel of the SRT, it feels very much like the Grand Cherokee, just a little bit longer. As I said, this is about 10 inches longer than the current Grand Cherokee. And even though this vehicle is super old, it still feels relatively solid. I guess you can credit the uh, folks at Mercedes for building a really robust chassis. <laughs> wow, nice sounding exhaust, but like a lot of other SRT products I've driven, the throttle is very touchy, very sensitive to kind of add to the impression that this is a quick vehicle. And it is a quick vehicle. Um, although I will say maybe I've just been spoiled driving the Trackhawk with that extra, or with the supercharger and the extra like 200, nearly 200 horsepower or a little over 200 horsepower because this definitely feels quick. But the one thing you're gonna immediately notice is the bulk of the Durango. This is a seriously heavy vehicle. I think for the next generation, they need to reduce the weight by at least, at least 700 pounds. It's just a very fat vehicle. And it's not necessarily a great handling vehicle. You kind of go around corners and you feel the weight of this thing. But drag racing is probably the strong suit of this car. So let's try the launch control, shall we? You just push the launch control button here. It's very easy. It tells you to apply brake pressure and then apply full throttle. So you use two feet and then floor it. <laughs> So Dodge says if you do that all day long, it'll get to 60 and 4.6 seconds, which are quick numbers. It's significantly quicker than the base uh, Durango or the 5.7 Durango. But yeah, I've definitely been spoiled by the Trackhawks 707 horsepower. That will get to 60 easily, like a second to a second and a half quicker. Uh, but this is definitely still fast and you have to admire Dodge <laughs> for that exhaust noise and <laughs> Especially when it shifts, it has that nice little 
verbal, but yeah, up here at about 3,000 feet above sea level, you're definitely noticing that the naturally aspirated engine struggles just a bit. Um, but here, I'm gonna come to a stop here. I'm gonna try another acceleration. This time, no launch control. Let's just floor it from a stop. <laughs> it's still fun. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the power feels very strong off the line, but definitely when you start getting up there, it's a quick revving engine, but it definitely feels very old school muscle. And that's where you're kind of feeling the altitude here, the weight of this vehicle, and it's still quick, but man, wouldn't it be awesome if Dodge put the Hellcat motor in the Durango and just called it the Trackhawk? I don't think they're gonna do it. Honestly, what Dodge needs to do is reduce the weight of this vehicle, because look, when you start going around some corners, the steering is light and numb. It's relatively precise, but it's just kind of slow. The body leans a lot. I mean, the, the sticky tires that this one has definitely help. Surprisingly, I've seen performance numbers. This thing will pull 0.9 Gs on the skid pad nearly, but it just, it feels like you're kind of, it doesn't feel happy to do so and that's kind of the whole impression I'm getting it feels quick in a straight line um, but don't really start pushing it around some corners on your favorite back roads it's not the best for that but <laughs> going down the road here the ride quality also is a little bit on the bumpier side I mean you've got 20 inch wheels a pretty stiffened up suspension and it's not the quiet it's also not not great in terms of isolation you do have a good amount of road noise but wind noise is subdued uh, really if you just want to ignore the noise you can kind of just use the paddles or put your foot down and the exhaust makes lovely noises <laughs> so I don't think people are ever going to get tired of that. What you may get tired of is, is the fuel bills for this car. I mean, 13 city, 19 highway. But who cares when it makes a sound like that? I mean, when's the last time you had somebody or you had a car with uh, six people in it and it made, you know, excellent noises like that? <laughs> Now the all-wheel drive system in this car, as I said, tries to put the power more to the rear. So it, the Durango does feel a slightly tail happy when you put your foot down and, ooh, it's a very uh, bumpy suspension there. This road's kind of crappy though as you go into this portion here, but um, visibility in the, the Durango actually is decent, but I wouldn't call it like great. You have these really thick pillars here that kind of cut into your visibility. You have this huge, tall hood. You have relatively large side mirrors and the view out of the back is fine because it doesn't have you know, crazy shapes. It's not trying to be a sleek crossover. It's like a brick. Um, the seats are also pretty comfortable. The driver assistance uh, tech in my test, that my tester has is pretty basic. Uh, it has the lane keep assist, you know, full speed range adaptive cruise control. Nothing super fancy or groundbreaking. It's kind of an area where FCA needs to improve. Where they don't need to really improve in is sounds of the engines. It's such an old school muscle car. <laughs> and you wouldn't expect something, a noise like that, to be coming out of a, a big SUV that's literally 5,500 pounds, it's 200 inches long. So it's a cool aspect to drive something like this. Would I personally choose one of these if I wanted a family car? I'm not necessarily sure. Um, the interior of the Durango for me is probably the weakest aspect. It feels too heavy. But, you know, it's a screaming bargain, honestly, if you guys want, you know, a nearly 500 horsepower, seven or third row, six passenger uh, family SUV. After eight long years, Dodge finally caved and gave us a true SRT version of the Durango. With 475 horsepower on tap, I imagine a lot of families who never thought they could have fun hauling around their kids and their spouse will be finding a lot to like with the Durango SRT. As you guys saw from the video, it has really nice, quick acceleration. It sounds great doing it. It's got a great transmission. It's got a roomy cabin. It looks relatively good. And although the interior definitely shows its age, it's still relatively roomy. It's got the latest tech. And really, I would love to see Dodge invest some money in the Durango and fully redesign it because the one thing they really need to do is just reduce the weight. At 5,500 pounds, this is heavy and it feels heavy behind the wheel. So it's more of a drag car, not really a handling car. So I find the SRT pages, performance pages to be a little bit silly. But with well, all that said, if you guys are looking for a fast family hauler that'll seat six people or have a third row of seats, what's it gonna cost to put one of these in your driveway? Well, usually vehicles like this are very rare or very expensive. The cousin of this car, the Mercedes GL, 
GLS starts at easily $125,000 for the AMG version. Thankfully, Dodge only charges you half that. Compared to the regular Durango, the base model, which starts to tick under 30 grand, this one starts at $62,995, which actually is about $5,000 less than the sister version to FCA, the Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT, uh, SRT which is around $67,000. Now, my tester has a pretty good amount of options on it from the driver assistance package to the SRT Imperior package to the upgraded wheels. This one stickers for 70 grand with the destination charge. So I know it's a lot of money to pay for a Durango. I actually think it may be about $10,000 too expensive, but if you guys are looking for a fast seven or third, six seater uh, sport utility vehicle, family vehicle that can really uh, put a big smile on your face as well as the kids, you may want to put the 2018 Durango SRT at the top of your list. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2018 Durango SRT. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Review YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Can you hear me okay? The wind's very strong. After eight long years, Dodge finally decided to give us a SRT, a, and, and, sorry. After eight long years, Dodge, huh? Okay, I think I can get it. Hmm. I'm trying to mix it up here and not do the same old stuff. No, hold on, I don't like that. Sorry, I don't like that. 